Welcome back, and I am glad that you are still with us right here on Good Morning Kenya. Now, right now, we want to get into our next discussion, and our topic of discussion is productivity in the workplace. We are going to be looking at ways to enhance productivity in the workplace. And joining me just to tell us more about this conversation is Dr. Selina Ambe. She is a strategic management and HR consultant with over 30 years of experience having worked in both the private sector and in government and she is also an author as well. Dr. Selina, welcome to Good Morning Kenya. Thank you. How are you doing this morning? I'm well, thank you. Mm -hmm. If we can go directly into you defining for us what productivity in the workplace means. Productivity, um, just to define it before I delve deep into it is um, it's the result of, of performance you know the output mm -hmm. uh, when you bring people on board mm -hmm. you expect them to perform and you are looking at uh, the outcome uh, the private sector would be looking at profit whilst the government would be looking at service delivery that is a uh, 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 that is the productivity part of the government. Mm -hmm. uh, efficient and effective service delivery for its citizenry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how do you show productivity in the workplace? Well, uh, productivity can manifest itself in various ways, but um, it's up to the employer to play his or her part. Mm -hmm. For example, you have to when you are recruiting you have to put the right people in place mm -hmm. having right skills and experience and even if they don't have experience you will have to train and develop them now once you do that um, you have to ensure that their workspace or work environment is conducive for them to perform mm -hmm. because an employee feels more comfortable performing when the environment is conducive. For example, uh, having the right tools, computers, mm -hmm. um, you know, photocopiers, telephones, and um, you know, ergonomics. That means uh, the chairs and tables and things like that, as well as having just the right temperature and lighting in the room where they are operating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what you've talked about um, is the role of the employer in yes. enhancing productivity. Yes. What of the employee? What is the role of an employee in enhancing productivity in the workplace? Now, the employee uh, will perform, but uh, the employer actually holds the bigger part in that mm -hmm. they have to provide the tools, as I said. And um, just to capture what the employee needs, uh, the employer will have to run what we call employee satisfaction surveys. Mm -hmm. These are very, very important because through these surveys, uh, the employer will be able to get the gray areas which the employee is not, uh, you know, being able to tell him, uh, you know, freely because the, sometimes they fear talking to the boss. But when the boss brings in an independent uh, researcher, to carry out um, a survey, uh, the employees are able to uh, put everything um, inside, you know, the structured uh, questionnaire. Or sometimes uh, one would um, do what we call one-on-one -on -one interviews. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you do a report, giving back the employer the, you know, whatever uh, you have been able to, the findings, you don't give names of who said what because then employees feel uh, threatened that if my employer knows this is what I'm saying and um, maybe it's not very good on his part, I may lose my job. Mm -hmm. So you just do a report that is a blanket report. And uh, that way the employer will be able to find out if this employee needs to have a training needs assessment done and the right uh, training given to him or her. And that will go a long way in ensuring that the employee performs. And also another area where an employee needs to be clear is uh, to know what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. by uh, getting the job description. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And on that note, we'll take a break, but we'll be back in a moment.
welcome back and we get to continue with our conversation that is productivity in the workplace and uh, dr selena we've talked about uh what productivity is and how that look looks like as well as how the employer and uh, employee uh the role they have to play in enhancing productivity what is the importance or benefits what are the benefits that come out of you know a, a place of work where you know the productivity is high well, the, the benefits are obvious in that uh, an employer gets a satisfied employee. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, the employee will be able to perform better. And uh, th this employer will get profit if it's in the private sector. Mm -hmm. In the government, the department or ministry will get uh, employees who are happy to serve the general public mm -hmm. with one heart. Mm -hmm. you know because they are happy about uh, their employment they are about they are happy about their jobs mm -hmm. because they understand what they're supposed to do and their employer treats them fairly yeah yes mm -hmm. and can doing the same thing day in day out you know this month next month year in year out interfere with productivity I don't think so. Once you get your d job description done, mm -hmm. there is so much that goes around an office or an organization. And uh, the employer would also be able to engage his or her employees mm -hmm. in um, team building activities mm -hmm. and wellness. Mm -hmm. In that um, you're just not sitting in an office from 8 to 5. Mm -hmm. You are able to go out there in the field and bond. I mean, employees could bond through football or netball or, you know, tug of war. Uh, I mean, ta yeah, tug of war. They, yeah. they can go away from the office, maybe take a retreat away from the office, maybe to a different town. For example, I have conducted mm -hmm. retreats for ministries and state departments uh, in Mombasa mm -hmm. from Nairobi, you know, and we, we have been gone for three days. Mm -hmm. And it's really fulfilling because you wake up in the morning and you you go for activities along the beach you come back you have breakfast and then there is a little bit of presentation uh, during the morning in the afternoon mm -hmm. you you get people going to swim some go to do other activities and then they're just those bonding activities and you find even people who didn't know each other they even become friends you know the interpersonal skills are enhanced mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. And how does performance maybe relate to productivity when it comes to government? Well, in government of Kenya has a very specific uh, guideline mm. towards productivity. It is called the performance contracting, uh, you know, tool, mm -hmm. whereby different ministries will set their targets. Actually, the president signs the PC with the cabinet secretaries. Mm -hmm. and then cabinet secretaries would sign with principal secretaries. And then it goes down the line. Principal secretaries would sign with the departmental heads. Mm -hmm. And um, for state corporations, uh, you'll find the chairman signing with the, the CEO and the CEO signing with the department. So when they do that, they're actually setting targets. Mm -hmm. And um, government, what it does, is, uh, you know, the, they, they have people who would come in and help the different ministries to set their targets mm -hmm. uh, using the strategic plan uh, of the present government now, you know, Kenya Kwanzaa uh, Manif Manif Manifesto mm -hmm. and uh, Vision 2030. Yeah. We have uh, sustainable development um, goals. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they have to look at all that. And um, government actually calls um, the strategic plan uh, MTP, which is medium term plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, we, the longer term is the vision 2030. So they, they have to consider all these uh, documents when they are setting the targets, and the targets must be achievable. Mm -hmm. In that, uh, they look at the budget that has been provided, and they also look at the mandate of each ministry. What is the ministry supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. What are the urgent? Uh, projects that need to be uh, you know looked at so um, when the setting of the targets are done uh, there is now um, it's actually done through negotiation and then there is the vetting uh, period whereby 
uh, they look at the guidelines again to see that these targets are aligned to the strategies within that ministry. Mm -hmm. And then um, implementation starts, and then there is an evaluation phase, and then there is a reporting whereby reports are drawn. And uh, this is the time that uh, uh, you find um, the evaluators have to find out if the ministries reached the targets. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't, what was the problem? Mm -hmm. In the private sector, they, they look at the bigger picture in the tab because they, are, uh, they look at uh, profit. So they, they want, uh, and they, they would actually use the marketing tool than any other tool mm -hmm. so that you know their marketeers go out there and sell the company and uh, just put everything in place including the the risk you know the the risk aspect of it mm -hmm. yeah monitoring and evaluation that too happens in government you know they they have to look at the aspect of risk and the aspect of monitoring and evaluation because they have to monitor activities yeah. so at the end of it uh, they see the outcome which is productivity was it efficient? Did it hit the target? Or did it go the other way? Mm -hmm. And if it, it did go the other way, then they have to find solutions to, you know, through emerging issues. Because mm -hmm. the, the environment that we uh, operate in is not static. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, politically, socially, culturally, technologically, you know, things change. Yeah. So you, you find that. Uh, a review has to be done all the time, maybe half yearly. Yeah. A review must be done just to see that things are moving and whatever has changed is incorporated, mm -hmm. uh, is embraced so that uh, you know, things continue in, in, the, in the way they, they hope they would. Yeah. yeah, so that's the importance of those reviews, just to check if you're still on uh, track, on track if yes. you're still on your plan, if yes. you're still following up on um, whatever it is that you had set as your target. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. And how do we maintain productivity? Because now we've looked at ways to be productive and enhancing it, but how do you maintain productivity? Uh, productivity by employees can be maintained, as I mentioned, through activities like team building, mm. where you just also show your employees that you care, mm -hmm. you train them, you deal with uh, matters of conflict management because in any, in any situation mm -hmm. whether at home in the office on the road there is always conflict mm -hmm. so conflict must be managed and uh, conflict actually can be managed by using the same tool of team building when you take your employees away you want their feedback you just can you can give them um, rolls of paper for so each one of them to write what their issues are. Mm -hmm. And then you just put them together. Before they go away, maybe it's two or three days, you, you can just let them know what the issues are. And then you incorporate those issues in the report that you're going to do. Because you just don't do team building and then people go. Mm -hmm. There must be a report done. And this report is the one that will be used by the employer mm -hmm. to you know, look at certain issues, if they, they should deal with them immediately or the ones that are more urgent, they deal with them. And that way, you know, uh, productivity can be enhanced. And as I said before, also, the conducting surveys have to be done from time to time. You just don't do it once. Mm -hmm. you, you can do the, the first one like uh, this year. Uh, and then um, after a year or two, you do what we call implementation. You are implementing the recommendations that were given by the researcher. And then maybe after another two years or so, you do the exit, which will bring out um, emerging issues. So it is actually a cycle. Yeah, it is a cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you, you'll just go back to the baseline. You know, the, the first um, survey is called, uh, uh, you know, baseline survey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you just go back to the baseline. Yeah, basics. you go back to after, after six years, you have to do a baseline. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, uh, this survey should always include work environment. Your employee must be satisfied with their work environment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, they must be satisfied with the way, attitude of the supervisor, mm -hmm. communication. Uh, have you given them tools to communicate, you know, either through email or telephone? Yeah. If they have their own phones, are you giving them airtime? 
Yeah, so if you do all these things, surely the empl employee will be satisfied. And of course, you look at the package. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look at the package. Uh, I know money is not a motivator because even people earning a lot of money may not be satisfied. Mm -hmm. But ensure that your employee uh, is getting a salary that uh, she or he can live in, you know, mm -hmm. pay rent, commute to work, be able to eat, you know, dress up. Uh, because you don't want an employee walking in in tatters. No, you want to look at an employee who looks smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it mm -hmm. may not be going for expensive clothes, but let them look smart mm -hmm. and the employer can help. In, in fact, some companies do give what we call dress, um, you know. Um, allowance. Yeah, they give dress allowance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also ensure if you want your employees to bond, you have a cafeteria. If you can, you have a cafeteria within uh, your buildings so that they don't have to go out. Mm -hmm. And the food should be wholesome, wholesome food. When they eat, they feel good. Mm -hmm. You can also think of having a clinic whereby a doctor could visit from time to time. And you have a permanent nurse on call because there are always issues with health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when employees know that they, they can run to the clinic, be treated, they'll be back in the office rather than somebody taking a whole day off mm -hmm. and then the following day they don't turn up because they had gone to see a doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Do more working hours equate to productivity? I don't think so. You, you just have to be smart mm. and um, work with the job description and the targets. You don't have to put in a lot of hours. In fact, a lot of people these days from COVID-19, mm -hmm. people work from home. And you find actually people do a lot. I mean, they're in their pajamas, but they're working. Mm -hmm. And you find what they've done from home is much more than when they're sitting you know, at their desk in the office. Mm -hmm. So I don't think putting in, because when you put in a lot of work, employees get burnt out. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets tired. Mm -hmm. You just have to be smart, get uh, the tasks done within you know, the time available, and let the employees go at five if they have to leave at five. Don't mm -hmm. tie them there, sitting there up to eight o'clock. Some of them have families and, you know, they have to sit there working. They can work from home mm -hmm. if, and, you know, if you provide them with the, the equipment, you know, maybe computers, they'll continue. If it's a report, they'll continue doing it at home and maybe send it. If you wanted it that particular day, they'll send it, mm -hmm. yeah, through email. So working long hours, that doesn't really mean, it doesn't that, mean that someone uh, is being no. productive. No, it doesn't mean one is going to be productive. Yeah. Because yeah, even yeah. health-wise, if mm -hmm. you just work, work, and work, the last few hours will not be productive because mm -hmm. you're tired in mind, in body, and even your emotions. You get angry. You, know, you, you have to feel a bit about your work. Mm -hmm. Get off your desk after an hour or so. Walk about. Get out. You know, just go around the building. Come back. And you find somebody is okay. Mm -hmm. But you cannot say that working for long hours is going to make one productive mm -hmm. now. There's a statement that um, the younger people nowadays mm -hmm. uh, run by, and they say that we no longer work hard, we work smart. What, what is your take <laughs> on that? I don't know how to answer that <laughs> question because, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I just think, as I say to you, whether one is young or old, mm -hmm. so long as you know what your call is, you know what your job description is. Mm -hmm. They leave it to you because there is something called an appraisal tool. Yeah, it, it will come along and what you signed as a target is going to be facing you. So your supervisor is going to be asking you, uh, did you, did you do what we agreed you're going to do by this time? So if you haven't done it and you don't have a good reason, actually you face being fired if you don't have a good reason. Mm -hmm. And that is why I think assessment and evaluation should not wait for one year. Mm -hmm. It should be an ongoing process. So you, when you have it as an ongoing process, then you don't have this thing coming up that, you know, I didn't um, reach my target because mm -hmm. you'll be able to see it along the way and uh, point um, this uh, employee to, into the right uh, direction that I think you are not doing the right thing, please go this way, mm -hmm. uh, without really confrontation or causing any conflicts. But if you wait until the end of the year, so much would have gone wrong. And uh, the company or the organization or institution 
uh, cannot you know recover what is lost mm -hmm. so it's um and that is why even the government knows it does the review every six months the pc you know the performance contracting they don't wait until the end of the year mm -hmm. because they want to ensure that the targets that have been set are on track mm -hmm. and if it is anything to to do with budget they would uh, pump in more money towards those activities mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah now conflicts in the workplace may hinder productivity yes. as we all know so how does one manage or how to go about managing conflict in an institution where you have employees well as i said you know you one thing you do is um you try to bond your employees mm. so that um they don't um step on each other's toes mm -hmm. and job description is a very important tool because once one knows what they're supposed to do yeah. one is not going to be dipping you know their hands in somebody else's space because mm -hmm. that is one area that um, causes a lot of conflict mm -hmm. and um, communication is very key in that uh, you ensure that um, whatever is communicated is understood because mm -hmm. a lot of people will communicate information and they don't um, ask whether people have understood what they're saying. So um, putting everything on paper is the best way of communication. So that if one has any uh, doubts, mm -hmm. they can ask, I didn't understand this paragraph, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. But when you communicate by word of mouth, then it has issues because people understand information from one you know from one person to the other yeah. differently mm -hmm. and then we have something called grapevine which should not be entertained mm -hmm. whereby you get people i think it's called backbiting people going in hush 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 voices mm -hmm. talking and then you find by the time it reaches the the person below it's the information is completely distorted mm -hmm. so what i would uh, urge people or employers to do is to disregard something called the grapevine they must put everything on paper everything they want their employees to uh, we have policies yeah when when you employ people you have uh, the strategic plan and then you must have a handbook that gives rules and regulations mm -hmm. of the organization mm -hmm. so once you do that I don't think there should be much uh, conflict because people understand how you want this organization to function and what their roles and uh, responsibilities are. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you have these little uh, hitches, it's easier to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do you generally ensure that uh, 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 the environment at the workplace is conducive and who is in charge of ensuring that um, the environment is conducive well that's why we have different departments hr department mm -hmm. you know procurement finance department mm -hmm. administration mm -hmm. uh, the department head is in charge of that department mm -hmm. and um, i think the best way is every week they should hold a meeting uh, on a, a Monday mm -hmm. or maybe a Friday when they're closing the week to see what issues have cropped up during the week mm -hmm. and what needs to be done during the following week and uh, because I mean we are human beings and people tend to uh, conflict you know mm -hmm. but uh, this can be dealt with through the the areas I have mentioned stress management providing proper tools uh, training needs you carry out a survey so yeah. that uh, employees can uh, maybe somebody wants to change a department they say okay i need to be trained in this area because i'm tired of working in this area so mobility is a very uh, key uh, tool moving people from one department to another mm -hmm. yeah i want us to look at uh, promotions yes would you say that uh, promotions may uh, enhance productivity and um, also the the opposite of it being true well, both I think are true because mm -hmm. there are actually some people who are afraid of promotion or some people they enjoy what they are doing so much that they feel when they go up the ladder, they may not do what they're doing or they may not be in contact with other employees as much as they are. Mm -hmm. So before somebody is, uh, is given that promotion, I think it's good to sit them down and just uh, let them know what um, benefits that promotion has. Mm -hmm. Some would even... Um, 
request to be given that increase, but they remain in the same position. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. There are such cases? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, I think um, if one wants to grow, uh, I think it's good to take that promotion so that you can one day reach the top, you mm -hmm. know, be a CEO or a head of a department. Because mm -hmm. if you don't get promoted, obviously, you're not going to reach there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as I said, um, there are people who don't want to be promoted. Yeah, they would rather be where they are because they're happier there. Mm -hmm. And um, so you just let them or if you feel uh, that um, the, you know, there is something they're hiding, you know, you, you have to get it out. Yeah, and would that not bring in maybe some conflict? Because maybe you were supposed to be promoted to go to a different level so mm -hmm. that there's someone else who's to, beneath to you up. to come up where you, if you want to, when you decide so in, to So in some instances, there. what I've seen, those who are difficult and they don't want to be promoted, they're given the, the option to resign. Mm -hmm. If they don't want, you know, because uh, they're, as you rightly say, they are hindering the promotion of the next person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's a tricky uh, kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What's the responsibility of each employee in an institution or in a place of work um, to ensure that there is productivity in the workplace? Well, you know, when you're given that contract, you sign it. When you are brought on board, Mm -hmm. you actually know what your roles and responsibilities are and you promise your employer this is what I'm going to do and the employer says this is what I'm going to pay you at the end of the month so it's actually a contract mm -hmm. and you have to live up to it you have to live up to it but at the same time we have what we call interpersonal skills it's like a family it's a larger family mm -hmm. from your family at home uh, employment actually you meet a lot of people you, you become one of them, uh, you get into their culture, the way they do things, and you even find there are people who don't want to look for a job elsewhere because they feel awkward just going to start all over again in a new company. Okay. But as I said again, if you want to grow, you have to move. And if there are no opportunities in your present place of work, then you just continue looking until you get something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's one thing you've really applauded is um, teamwork, that is team building, you yes. know, getting that rest and allowing people to go and just get to interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Maybe how often should that be happening um, for it to be termed as healthy? Uh, depending on the scope mm -hmm. or the number of employees an organization or institution has, mm -hmm. you may find it difficult to do it all at once. So you may want to do it department by department because you want to bring everybody aboard, whether it's a messenger, a driver, a secretary, uh, you know, a, a clerk or the, the departmental director. You want to take everybody, mm -hmm. but each time the CEO will have to accompany them because he has to capture. It is through this team building that the employees will be able to know the CEO better. Mm -hmm. So if you have... Um, an organization with 200 people, you could have four team building activities within that one year. And then when you come to the following year, you start again. So it's an, on, an ongoing activity. And you'll find companies or organizations or institutions that uh, embrace team building. Mm -hmm. They do very well. They do very well because you find em employees are actually, they call that organization home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I'll allow you to give us your parting shot. Well, my parting shot is that um, as employers, you have to recognize that your employees have needs. Mm -hmm. And when you bring them on board, kindly develop, train and develop them. Let them be part of that organization. Deal with issues of conflict management, team building, stress management. And just let this employee be part of the organization. And for the employee, I would like to, to urge them to know that this employer is giving them a chance because not everybody is lucky enough to get employed. So once they sign the contract, they should be able to live up to what you know, they have promised and signed in the contract. Mm -hmm. And not just be 
uh, watching the you know the the clock that you know want to run home uh, they should be able to uh, if they know they are running home at five but uh, are able to carry home the the work then that is fine but they, they I know you asked me earlier if working long hours is good mm -hmm. uh, but there are those uh, instances where you find maybe there is a, a meeting or a conference coming and there are certain things that have not been completed mm -hmm. so in such instances which are rare but they they, they do exist mm -hmm. People may have to work longer hours, or some even, they don't come back home because they have to ensure that everything is in place yeah. for the conference that is coming. Mm -hmm. But uh, the day-to-day the -day operation, let people stick to the working hours. Because when you sign a contract, you're told you're going to be working from 8 to 5 or 9 to 5. And then with a break for lunch, it's important for an employee to walk away from that desk and go and have lunch or do something different and then come back and continue mm -hmm. yes all right thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and thank you so much for chipping into this particular conversation and just giving us more information on what productivity in the workplace is and thank you for having me this morning all right, and this is where we call it a wrap right here on Good Morning Kenya. That was Dr. Selina Ambe. She is a strategic management and HR consultant who has worked in both the private sector and in government. My name is Vivian Dagua. Until next time, good morning.